Martin, the question of the origin of life, what was there before life, is uh, one of the deepest questions and one of the earliest questions in biology. Um, you sought to address this question. I think that's uh, an ambitious and brave move. Um, but from the standpoint of mathematics, uh, how can mathematics help you to understand what seems to be almost philosophical kinds of <laughs> questions? So um, we have a mathematical machinery to describe chemical reactions. And that's, that's what I learned as a student, you know, that's chemical kinetics. So whenever we see a chemical uh, reaction and when we postulate a certain mechanism, then there's a mathematical formalism for this. And we can look at those equations. Very similar equations describe biological processes. So very similar equations describe cells dividing or cells meeting with each other and giving rise to something new. When you so, say very similar equations, what kind of equations? Differential equations? Yeah, differential equations, for example. So then I asked myself, um, if I look at a biological equation and a chemical equation, what's the difference? When would you call something biology and when is something just chemistry? And the interesting thing is uh, the difference is really made by reproduction. In biology, you have reproduction, cells mm -hmm. reproduce, mm -hmm. DNA makes copies mm -hmm. of itself. Right, right. And as soon as you have something like reproduction, I would say that chemical system is actually a biological system. And before this, you have just a chemical system. Mm. So I wanted to apply this now to the origin of life. Mm. Okay, but just to understand the nature of equations, equations are describing a process. So a differential equation in biology is describing the rate of change, how populations may do something. Mm. Uh, in, in chemistry, they are a little bit different in the sense that they're describing, I don't know, the relationship between bond, bu chemical bonds and how, how the kinetics work no, the, and what so the angles are. The chemical kinetics itself would also describe, so you have, say, you have some hydrogen, you have some oxygen, and then yeah. they react and they give rise to some water. So right. as time right. unfolds, you right. follow the abundance of hydrogen and oxygen and water. Right. right, okay. So similarly, you know, you have like one type of cell, another type of cell, as time unfolds, right. you study the change. Okay. So, so the, 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 that makes sense, but, the, but that's not, those are not things that explain what they are. It's explaining how they change over time. And that's what I mean. Yeah. So yes, I it's mean a, it's equations a little bit of change. Different. Yeah, I okay. mean equations of change. Okay, so, so, so if you have chemical reactions, biology, biological uh, uh, substances, um, and you're looking at their equations and how they change mm -hmm. over time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, agree that they're similar. And then you have to ask, why is one living and one not? Why would you call why one living? Call, so it yeah. would start with the question, what is life? Right. And the question, what is life? I would say that which evolves. Life is that which evolves, which brings us to the question, what is evolution? And that's precisely what I want to address. So evolution is a chemical system that has reproduction. Uh, okay, okay. So now, would those equations look different? Yeah, they look different because you see these terms that, have, that, are, that are describing the reproduction. Okay, so to, to, so to the biological equations, you have to add... Reproduction. Term. You yes. have to add reproduction. Yeah. And, and, and what does that look like mathematically? Mm, it's uh, some... A gross term, for example, that a type sort of increases exponentially or increases according to some formula. Mm. And so, um, as you studied this, what, what do you, do you, have you made progress? So then I, I wanted to get at the following. Also, you know, because we usually take it for granted that biology starts with reproduction. Once you have reproduction, you have natural selection. Yeah, yeah. That, and before that, reproduction, you don't have natural selection. Right, right, so for the origin of life, we are kind of in this, we are caught somewhere because before, once you have natural selection, you think something is working in your favor. Before this, it's just luck. Before everything is just luck. Either it's made like this or it's not made like this, yeah, yeah. and you can't do anything. Right. But once you have natural selection, everything yeah, is given yeah, to you. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and so I wanted to probe this. I wanted to probe how much is still given to you just before reproduction comes. Ah. So I wanted to show that I can get selection and mutation and cooperation before reproduction. Before reproduction? Before reproduction, yes. It's and then I defined pre-life, and pre-life is a chemical reaction that has no reproduction in it, but it has selection in it and mutation and cooperation. Okay, so if, if, if I'm now a skeptic to what you just said, uh, how can you convince me that pre-life chemical reaction has mutation, selection and cooperation, which is your, your, your uh, uh, some would say idiosyncratic <laughs> uh, uh, addition to uh, mutation and selection with cooperation. How, how do you get that in an inorganic uh, chemical reaction? So it's, it's, uh, it's organic, but sort of not biologically. 
Yeah, um, yeah. I'm thinking of organic chemistry. So all biological systems are based on DNA, RNA. Right, right, right. So whether you believe on on cycles first, on an RNA world, or on cells, you know, at Doesn't some matter. stage you have to talk about RNA right. information. Right. So pre-life is something where you just make a polymerization reaction of these monomers and they give you strings. And those strings are not necessarily making copies of each other, right. but they're right. just growing spontaneously. Okay. And now certain strings could become more abundant than other strings, simply by the growth reaction. But that's precisely natural selection. Natural selection is some things are more successful than other things. Okay. And so that's what we have there. Interestingly, it's a very blunt knife. Reproduction giving rise to natural selection is very sharp. Yeah. But without reproduction, you still get changes in abundance, but big differences lead to small dif big differences in growth rate lead to small differences mm. in abundance. Mm. Okay, so now I understand how you got the selection or how you're defining selection. And how did, how did you get, what is the mutation, the different uh, lengths? Of different the, lengths, different uh, strings, different bit strings. Right. So there could be yeah. one string that is like the one that is the most common one. And on the way toward it, you make some side reactions which produce other strings, but yeah. not that one. Just so by they, the chaos Ran of the molecules that yes, are just Yes, I mean, just statistical randomness. Yeah, okay, okay. All right, now, you, what about cooperation? So cooperation... Pre-organic. Pre cooperation pre would pre be that uh, some of those uh, strings already act as enzymes and they can catalyze certain reactions. So, for example, okay. I could catalyze a reaction which is in the trajectory that leads to your bit string. Mm. And you catalyze a reaction uh, that is in the trajectory that leads to my bit uh, and suddenly we are cooperating. Right. Suppose, suppose that you've uh, convinced me and I go along on your journey. Uh, if I were to believe that uh, selection and uh, that mutation, selection, and cooperation existed in pre-life form, what are the implications? Of I that? think the implications are that the origin of life is no longer a single magic moment of great luck, but there's actually a very generative system which continuously produces origins of life. 